Hello, welcome to this episode of URC Unloaded. And as always, I'm joined by the best in the business of John Barkley and Stephen Ferris. How are you lads? You okay? Good, thanks. Very good. Yeah, You're in the same well. room. You both <laughs> in the same room. Multi screen, mate. Yeah. Um, John, have you got COVID? Are you okay? No. no. Ah, no. Not me, mate. No, no, just looking a bit peaky, that was all. But nice to see you. Nice to see you. How's things, Stevie? You all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, a bad back. Yeah, really bad back. So, a little diazepam, a couple of painkillers over the last 24 hours of seeing me right. Broke the injury. Paranals. Paranals I've got bad back. Ten years. Years. I've got bad back. Oh, my back is killing me, lads. Like, it's really bad. I'm not sure you'd probably be able to answer this. As soon as I had my first kid, my back is got really sore. I gave birth to it, did you? Well <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got to move on. As always, we have um, a special guest. And this week, we have Director of Rugby at the Dragons, Dean Ryan. Dean, hello. How are you? Uh, you're joining us from South Africa. Is that right? Yeah, we're in Durban now. We've been here for a few days after uh, a few days in Pretoria before we played the Bulls, and now we've moved down into Durban for a uh, game on Friday night against the Sharks. How's your day been today? I hear on the on the waves you've been on safari. Uh, not quite as glamorous as it sounds. Went for lunch somewhere, which was uh, lunch for lions. <laughs> Let's have something in the background with with a springbok, but. Uh, and I think this afternoon we're giving the guys a bit of an afternoon. So there's been uh, some guys out fishing, a bit of golf and everything else to experience uh, a little bit of what Durban's got to offer. You haven't got anyone dull enough to put a hand in a lion's cage, have you? No, I don't think we've seen a lion. So I think we're fortunate. All right. I think those days are, uh, nobody's gone on safari since that, I don't think. Yeah, you ruined the same like Yeah. <laughs> and Tavis Noyle is gone now from the Dragon. So he's probably the only one that might want to stroke one. Um, <laughs> How have you how have you found it? How's Pretoria been? How was how's altitude for the guys? Um, I think the first thing it's been fantastic. I think hospitality has been unbelievable, and and I think um, you almost forget that none of these guys have toured before. You forget that two years of COVID is getting together in a car was seen as as radical. So um, just the whole experience, and um, you know, I was fortunate to have toured here a couple of times, both with club and and country, and just how much, you know, how keen they are to see us here is, has been really humbling, actually. Is uh, Pretoria was fantastic to that extent. Um, it is a bit of a lull because uh, what's coming what's coming in the game is uh, what you'd expect from South Africa. But that itself is, you know, I watched I watched obviously a lot of a lot of the rugby, and it, it's it's a fantastic addition. And and you know, forget the challenge that we've got at Dragons. I watched the Edinburgh game. I watched the Ulster game, which I thought was a fantastic game of rugby. It's different. And we all know when we play test rugby, it's different. You've got to work out different things. You can't play the same way that you, you do in the Northern Hemisphere, whether you're at high belt or not. And um, I think it's a great rugby experience. And uh, we've tried to you certainly look at it as that and and uh, you know it will be a powerful two weeks for us as a as, as a as a region and as players and, and staff coming together uh, on a whole how different do you think the south african franchises have been because at the start of this year they were played all across the border uh, in uk and ireland and italy but in south africa you know they seem they seem different, you know. They seem a lot better. Do you think that's just purely down to home advantage or, or conditions? Oh, not at all. Is no, no internationals were available pre-Christmas as they go through the championship, and and you just see um, the resources behind them. They're enormous franchises. You know, we we trained mm. at a school with fifteen hundred boys that has ten teams in each year. Um, you know, you've got a Curry Cup as a as an A League. Um, and I know the Bulls play more than Stain and in like the A League sort of five days before putting it on the bench is the structures yeah. that are here, the resources that are coming through. And you, you get a real feel for that. Big stadiums, internationals playing, and, and you know, the South African boys are, are back in selection now. And you know, you, you know, it's a real challenge to the rest of us and, and certainly for us 
at the Dragons and within Wales about how we answer this challenge and how um, how the URC goes forward and how we're competitive in it. And I think it'll be interesting. I, I, I spoke to the Munster lads before and, and said it's a real shame that they're not going down with their test guys because, you know, when I watched the, the Ulster game, I thought it was a fantastic game of rugby. Oh, it really was a fantastic game of rugby. And as I think, as you see some of the top of the URC come down here and compete, um, it's a real rugby challenge, a real old-fashioned rugby challenge, which I think uh, is, is great to, to experience. Dean, you've obviously been around the, the rugby circles, played in a lot of teams, coached a lot of teams. Um, and I suppose from a lot of people looking from the outside in at the Dragons, there seems to be a bit of negativity. Obviously, that obviously comes compounds things when you, when you're losing more frequently than you want. But at the Dragons this year, it obviously hasn't went as planned yet. Is it more down to a mentality thing? Is it more down to a little bit of a lack of quality compared to other teams? Or is this is it something that you've worked out yet? Or are you able to work it out before the end of the season? I, I think it's a lot of those things that you mentioned, Stephen. It's it's unrealistic to have a side that you know receives up to 2 million less than other regions and probably 4 or 5 million less than some of the other franchises and go, do you know what? We expect you to be competitive week in, week out. Um, yeah. It's also a real challenge for us. You know, certainly when I came to the Dragons was how we how we go about moving forward. You can't sit in that space and, and without trying to influence the structures that sit around. And, you know, I'll be honest, is, is we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able to do that both through... Um, my chairman, I haven't been able to do it through the rugby board and we're still in a very similar situation. So, you know, sometimes I just face um, creating environments that allow people to be the best version of themselves is, um, I think sometimes we get caught in a, you know, do we really have a magic wand that think that a size stacked of Springbok internationals and we've got sort of 20 year old coming off the bench is, is really um, where the, we should be. And, you know, I think there's been a lot spoken about it. It's not a simple answer. It's not just about money. Is is There's lots of things that people need to look at. And, uh, you know, as I say, some of them I, I haven't been able to, to influence. Um, some of them we are. Um, I'm incredibly proud. I, I thought, you know, people don't understand when a side has got a golf in class as some of the times that we face, how difficult that is to turn up and be the best version that you can be. Um, we've been under enormous pressure at times. Sometimes we let ourselves down and, and there's times, certainly fixtures like Munster, that we're very um, unhappy about. But last week, we lose a game, you know, by a significant scoreline, but um, the only there's, some, there's some impressive yeah. performances. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I've been around a long time and, uh, you know, ultimately to move forward, we need a combination of players developing resources and really to add players and until we can get better equality of funding better access to other markets it's very difficult to close that gap and keep young players looking forward through an optimistic lens it's really interesting hearing you speak you've used the word uh, challenge uh, in a good way in terms of the playing challenge in the touring challenge the challenge with budget how much of your role at the moment in terms of rebuilding Dragons is around managing that expectations because, as you said, how can people expect Dragons, with all due respect, to compete against a team full of South African internationals with, you know, X number of million? Like, how do you communicate that with the players and and the, I guess the other stakeholders in the game who who want to see Dragons win? Yeah, and they and they do. Is yeah. remarkably they have the same expectation. You know, we'll go into derbies and everyone expects exactly the same, and yet there'll be sides that have had eight million over the last four years more than us, and you know. How do we manage that internally is, we, you know, is, is very difficult. You don't go, um, we're not competitive. We talk about being the best we can be. We talk a lot about being stable. Um, and certainly, you know, when I spoke initially to the chairman, is I thought my experience could bring stability because if you just, you know, I think a lot of people have come into the Dragons, over-promised to get a job, and then in two or three years' lines, time scrambling around, and, and the result's the same fundamentally some of the structures around how it's funded how academies are dealt with how managed talent in wales is dealt with how overseas talent they're all part of how you move organizations forward and um at the moment we haven't been able to really shift that 
know, we can look at COVID, we can look at lots of things, but we're still currently owned by the governing body. We still are mm. the, the least invested in Wales. And I'll continue to, to challenge why that happens, because I'm passionate about the next lad coming out of Gwent should have the same chance as anybody else. I believe strongly in the pathways that are coming through should be given the best opportunity. And, uh, you know, I understand that the, the things that fly around when things don't go well, but I've been around long enough to understand those as well. Dean, you've coached Bristol, Worcester, um, Scotland, um, and Gloucester. How would you rate your experience at the, at the Dragons compared to all that? I mean, did you know how tough it was going to be between sort of club and union when you arrived? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think when I came, is I think the fundamental difference between the English Premiership and um, um, Wales is Wales' is development job, whereas the English Premiership is a recruitment job. If you move yeah. into a space and you don't like where you are, you move about 25% of your team on and, you, you know, you've you know you got a, a wage cap, you're able to, you know, so as a director of rugby, you're moving into a space that very quickly you can manage change. You can't do that in Wales. The funding model doesn't allow you to attract other Welsh players. It's very difficult to be the fourth region. And, and you know, there are some criticisms. The funding model allows people just to stay where they are and be quite comfortable. Um, you're not allowed to, to recruit overseas talent. You know, you know to be honest, we're, we're a long way down and being front of the queue when it comes to anybody of, of any note. So it's about development. And, you know, I knew that coming in, but I also knew it should change is you can't just sit and take a group of 20, you know, 20 year olds and expect them to go against Leinster, to go against Ulster, to go against the Bulls. And, and actually that to be a positive um, development experience. Development's a, a combination of lots of things. It's some wins along the way, it's some tough times along the way, and it's some exposure to, you know, world-class players. It's all, all sorts of things. And, and at the moment we're, we're struggling to um, get people to understand how do we, do we move forward to be competitive in the league that is, I, take, I, I believe, taking a huge step up this year, both from, um, and you know, I, I'd say the Scottish we've played them were probably two of the most difficult sides to play this year. And, and mm. with having most of the talent available at most of the times um, has really lifted the URC. Yeah, well, there's still seven games left of, of the regular season. What do you want to see? from your team for the remaining games? I want them to be the best version they can be. And it's, uh, you know, I know that's something like you could traditionally throw out some of the hide behind, but is um, if we do that, we're competitive. I think Welsh derbies, you know, better than anybody else, never really follow form. Um, but it's us doing that um, in the space we are is, you know, we've got Sharks on Friday, we come back, we've got Gloucester. Then we go into a run of derby, so after missing through COVID mm. for about four or five weeks. So, yeah, fingers crossed we have people available. Um, this is the first time really since post-autumn we've had some of our internationals starting to come back. And if we keep that stable, we can keep them around. We can be best version and hopefully we bloody a few noses along the way. Yeah. Been just a, a positive, obviously, for the Dragons. A couple of signings coming in. Are there any more faces that you would like to be joining the, the Dragons for next season? Obviously, Bradley Roberts, who I know very well from, from Ulster. JJ Hanran also. Um, is there any specific positions that you would like to add a little bit more strength and depth? Yeah, Depart, I think maybe. Um, strength and depth is a challenge across, across the board. Um, I think what we we recognise, we, we, we do need to change. I think over the COVID period, we, we probably backed... You know, being stable. I think the Dragons, you know, I, when I first came in, the people were talking about having six or seven directors of rugby during a career. Um, so we, we talked about being stable. We didn't go into a change mentality. But I think now we're in a period where we've got to look to add more quality. I think the opportunity to play less during internationals, I think, I think most squads will be looking at probably reducing numbers. And hopefully, you know, we'll probably take some risks about investing probably in a, in a 15 players with, with a younger group and probably a bigger gap to the younger group sat behind. And, and that would be probably the strategy going in. So we definitely got some faces coming that haven't been announced. As I say, JJ, I, I'm really pleased with both JJ and Bradley that really get what the challenge is of the Dragons. It's about 
coming into a place and being able to take it in a direction forward. And both were were, were very keen to to play a part in that. Mm. Um, Dave, could you just give us like a little insight into the squad, like from from your point of view, who who were the key, not players, but who are the key personnel in that squad that that keeps it tight knit, that, that gels it together, that you want around? And, and I'm not talking about sort of on the field. I'm talking about you know in training, in, in free time. Who are the guys that 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 keep the squad tight and, and motivate it? Yeah, I think is a lot of the, uh, the names probably that don't get discussed enough is. You know, I think Harrison Keddy is a fantastic club player. Jack Dixon, fantastic club player. Mm. And it's it's those guys who have been a lot, long time at the Dragons that um, have had to be 100% every week, even though that sometimes that hasn't gone their way, um, who I think are real credit. And, you know, I think anybody who watched Jack Dixon's performance last week, taking a result and taking a, the challenge that we have against the Bulls, should be talking about him in mm. other in other conversations because I don't see other people playing at that level. But is you know, we always talk is it is a challenge at the Dragons. Um, and we always try and keep recognising good, even if things don't go our way. And uh, I'd certainly like some other people to start talking about those guys in, in, similar, in a similar vein. Brilliant. Well, look, enjoy your time in South Africa. Good luck against the Sharks. Good luck in the derbies coming up and hopefully the Dragons can finish the season strongly. Uh, thanks Thank for joining you. us, Dean. Cheers, fellas. Nice to meet you. Cheers. There we are. Mate, boys, it's tough in South Africa. Edinburgh, the only team, I think, that have won out there. Well, hey? Rob took a rod. Nah. <laughs> Joker. Hey, well, <laughs> We will get to that. We will get to that. Um, but do you know what? I was, I was trying to think, like, I, th I reckon the South Africa teams just have a lot more pace than in their teams. I, I see pace everywhere. I, I was I watched a couple of games and I watched the Stormers game. It, it, and I, it made me think about, you know, when people talked about the, you know, Super Rugby and defence is optional. The speed of the game they play at is like nothing you play in, in the conditions. I, I know I mm -hmm. get it. You throw an altitude into that as well. Like teams were absolutely hanging out their arses in games. And the South African teams start so strong in those conditions. Then you typically see some of the, the, the home based uh, franchises come back into games. But I mean, yeah, you see this. I mean, the speed is it's just ridiculous. You know, two but minutes it's everywhere. In it is the whole back three, uh, uh, lightning quick. It's outrageous, man. It was outrageous. It's awesome watching because I think we watched them like over here. But like, I wonder what they're going to be like. And then you bring back the internationals, you let them play at home in the sun. Uh, mm. How good with the South African teams? Summer rugby, Stevie, um, your former team, Ulster, put up a decent fight. But how did you see it? Well, they put up more than a decent fight, in fairness. Like, I think. I know John was flagging me because of, of my Ulster bias, but like the start, I think the Stormers just got off their blistering start. Ulster were throwing the ball around, you know, kind of played to the weather conditions. And then all of a sudden, 14 0 down, they're like, hold on a second here. If we keep playing like this, it's going to be a cricket score. And they just tightened it up, went back to their box kicking, won a few turnovers, milked a couple of penalties, a um, couple of nice turnovers at the breakdown from Marcus Ray. And all of a sudden, the Stormers seemed to get frustrated and then they they stopped playing as well and tried to protect their lead. And then it was like tip for tat. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. finished the game stronger. Like I, I know you're saying, John, about the South African teams look like, you know, mm. they're obviously more acclimatized to the altitude, but Ulster looked really strong in the closing five or 10 minutes of that game. And hopefully we're going to see it here. This is a pick and job by Callum Reid, the, the, the sub loose head prop. And mm. it's the ball is. I totally agree with the ball's out of his hand, but if it's knocked backwards, then he's falling, falling on the ball, and it's still a try. So for me, that's a try. And for some reason, the TMO managed to wangle Ganechi, who was the referee's arm, and say that it was a, a knock-on by Ulster and that it was a scrum to the Stormers. Um, and then they got a penalty off the resulting scrum and kicked up close to the halfway line. So yeah, 
I think there's been news articles that have come out this week to say that the referees got it wrong. There should have been more communication and everything else. But that's the breaks you're going to get away from home and, you know, home advantage, the Stormers. I, I, I certainly think that they stopped playing and they have a lot more to offer going forward. But and we've just seen glimpses of, it, glimpses of it in the first 10 or 15 minutes of that game before the Stormers can be left for the rest of the season. But hats off to Ulster for coming back into the match. Can I be honest with you, Steve? Yeah. The, the ball did go backwards, and you're allowed to score it with any of your torso. It doesn't have to be a hand. It could be your body. It could be your tummy. So, so it's a try. John would benefit from that. Yeah, it's a try. But I only watched it once. That's all. That, I only need to see it once. And re, and no, it's a try. It's not knocked on. Goes backwards yeah. there. Backwards. Touched it down with his derby. Yeah, but... I think we know what Stevie's man's going to be. There we are, backwards. Anyway, let's not talk. It was a class game from a, yeah, neutral, okay. a neutral point of view, watching some of the play, tip for tap, ebbed and flowed, awesome game of rugby. And I'm, I'm jealous. I never got to tour to South Africa with Scotland because Dean Ryan didn't pick me for two of the tours. Uh, I never got to tour with... Oh, Edward confident now he's off, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, Billy Big Balls now. <laughs> But it looks awesome, like, and it's interesting, like Dean Ryan saying that they're, they're letting them tour. And when we had John Dobson from the Stormers on week one or two, and he's and they're saying the South African teams come over here, and then they let them tour properly. I think is, I think it's, it looks like a class tournament at the moment. Well, JB, you say it looks awesome, but the Sharks, Edinburgh, oh, I've yes. not seen conditions like that. That was like that was like the '95 World Cup, the amount of rain, the final. Remember that? They, it was like um, I'm just sweeping you, you the rain Kong, off the pitch. Hong Kong Sevens. I think it was like 1996 or something. And they had, it was bizarre. Like I, I seen them like trying to do restart and stuff, couldn't get any bounce. But yeah, get, well, it could have gone either way. But Edinburgh notched the victory. Only only team to win on South African soil. So I know. Yes, well, the Sharks. Imagine. I thought were, were the better. I think the Sharks were the stronger team, or are the stronger team out of? It's just, yeah, it's one of those. I mean, Edinburgh still played with a bit of naivety, but like just moments of all it takes is a moment or two in a game. I think the scoreline. Probably flat as yeah. Edinburgh a bit, but they managed it. You probably wouldn't have thought on paper, given the conditions, Edinburgh would come up trumps in those conditions. Blair, Blair was brilliant, actually. Uh, yeah, he was. He played the game, played really well with maturity after you know, a tough, tough run at 10, probably against Ireland, which would have been his last game. But Edinburgh looking pretty good after a disappointing result against Glasgow the week before. Sharks were quite shocking, mind. They couldn't look after the ball. They were turning the ball over. It was very unlike them. Yeah, but yeah. couldn't play with front. When, when would they have played in those conditions? Like, yeah, I mean, like they over, did over here. They would, yeah. Well, even so, even that. I remember speaking to Josh Strauss when he joined Glasgow, and he, it took him like weeks and weeks, probably months, arguably, to get used to the conditions. And those mm. staffing boys probably thought they left those conditions behind. Go home. Nice dry ball. No, yeah. no, no. No, no. That's, that's why I reckon we had a great weekend of URC action. You know, all the games were exciting. And part of that was because the conditions were great. You know, they they were fantastic over um, in Wales. Um, but what game What game do you want to go next? I like Cardiff Glasgow. Yeah. That Hell was of a game of rugby. Game. And you were there. Yeah. Yeah, I was there with Big Jim. Talking about dry, you know, dry track... Like just quick ball, both teams chucking it about. Glasgow should never have lost that game. If you're 21 what? eight up or 20 28 15 up with 20 to go, pretty poor to lose that game. Good enough, well, fair play to Cardiff. But if you're looking at Glasgow, they, they'll be thinking that was crap. That's a killer blow. That is, you come out yeah. in the second half and you throw an intercept in cancel area. Then it goes, it goes 28 away, 15 here, football. and you're thinking, right, game yeah, up. but. But Cardiff have got a great attack, so they're always going to come back at you. Um, this this starts off the Willis Haller Hollow try. Um, it's quite it's quite a crafty a loft load from Hallam Amos, and that's just oh, class. Yeah. That's what you want, isn't it? That's exactly what you want in rugby. You want someone with really good footwork, acceleration against the prop. Like what's a, what's a Kevin prop didn't really have any chance. It was turning oh, the ball, wasn't it? So he came back. Rolly Campbell there, like he, what's he, what's I know. There? There was about it's six guys before that. Get back and get somewhere closer to the remark. I know. Be a be a ruck inspector. A Theo Cabango, boys. Theo Sorry, Cabango. Uh, Theo Cabango. Oh, you're, you're you like him? What? Yeah, you're a lot. A lot. Too much. 
if I'm honest. Too much. <laughs> maybe more than Scott. Will, maybe more than Scott Williams. <laughs> I know I texted you about it, but I think he said after the game that Cardiff would lose that game if it was away from home. Like the, the yeah. home support and the homes, like it, it, it makes such a difference to their season. Yeah, it does. And you know, the great teams are the ones that win away from home, aren't they? They're the ones that grind out wins. No matter, you're, you're comfortable at home. You've got the home support, you know, the surroundings, the noise, everything's for you. But And they're good at home. Kind of, you know, the last home game they played prior to this was Leinster. It was a brilliant win, and people turned up and um, for the game against Glasgow. But yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those things they've got to. They're turning the arms part back into a tough place to come and win. But it's the away ones which which you know get you to rise in the league. And they had three massive losses on the bounce. You know, one in Ulster and then two in South Africa. But they bounced back, but yeah, Theo Kabanga boys. He, he featured a little bit in Europe when the when Cardiff had all those players that were either um, in isolation or still in South uh, still in South Africa. And pure pace, honestly, his acceleration is electric. Probably quite raw still in terms of reading the game, but really exciting to watch. Um, Halla Hollow was class. I uh, might pull this hammy though, which might be a little bit disappointing because imagine him. This week, right? If you're Welsh, against either Scott Williams, John Davis, or Johnny Williams, you know all three centres that play for Wales, so it'd been a, a proper good test for him. But a really good win for um, for Cardiff. Um, so let's move on to Connor Leinster. Game was dead, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it should have been. I mean, I, well, I watched the game and then half time you're thinking, hold on a second, surely it, it was like that England, yeah. uh, England Ireland game, and they get, get galvanized and Leinster were just all at sea, and every every knock on went to Connor. You'd see them growing arms and legs, but you see the red card here, it's a killer. You know, yeah. 90, 90 seconds in. That is, that's a definite red. Oh, definite yeah, 100%. What does he think? Oh, I know. You know what? He like anytime he's played for Connor over the last couple of games, he's been actually quite poor. Um, I, I thought they would have went with Sammy Arnold in the center, and yeah, they mm. went with him. And then the bat, like so, red card was given, and like Lancer give away a yellow card straight up off the kickoff. Mm. So like all of a sudden the game is going. Oh, hold on, boys, we have a good side out. Lancer down to fourteen men. Let's go. Jack Cardi then misses the touch off the missed touch. Lens are going back up the pitch until he gets red carded. It's just like, you know, when are Connick going to learn? Like, they've got so many good players, but they just keep shooting themselves in the foot. And I know, John, you said they're in it at half time, but it, it just felt like yeah. Lens were going to at some stage. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think they were ever going to win it. I think you look, Lens are too good to come back. I actually was thinking about the. The red card, and we commented a few weeks ago, Shanks, on the when they got the pants pulled down at Edinburgh. And I think if you're yeah. a coach or a senior player that you're probably talking about defensively, it's, it's a much easier thing to fix than attack. I think it's you know mindset, get forward, physicality, and to yep. me that's what that looks like. Just first minute of the game, I'm going to get forward, I'm going to be aggressive, and you've forgotten the technical part of your game. So I think Connor defensively are all over the shop still defensively, They're just yeah, nowhere well, near well, where they well, be. I have to agree with you all over the shop, but like a young guy called Hawkshaw come on for Leinster um, and pulled the strings really well. And he was the one that opened the game up massively for Leinster in the second half. So he's a young guy and he, Leinster Geppetto. fan. That's not nice Geppetto. To, to, to keep an eye for him, but I could see him get some game time and play really well. Like <laughs> the Ospreys had a tough time um, uh, playing the Lions. And oh, like it looks like the handicap in that game was like 15 points. It's like the, the Ospreys were always going to get smashed. Like, it's just I mean, like, look at the that's tackling. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Seriously, that's it does, embarrassing. It does a good job of getting out of the way. Um, they look like they struggled <laughs> right from right from the start, mind you know. That, that and maybe that is down to altitude because it's a I think it's a like 13 or 14 mm, nah. 100 <laughs> meters. It does affect you a little bit. Yeah, um, I'll ask but, the question. So I never played it. I trained at altitude once with uh, 
with the Scotland camp up in Fontainebleau, and it was what I genuinely remember thinking: this is the hardest week of training I've ever done in my life. This uh, one is about pace. Look at Van der Merwe here. He's he's rapid. You've got Max Wani, you've got uh, Similani. They're so fast. Like you get, they get a little bit of space. They've got unbelievable footwork. But Ospreys looked looked pretty ordinary. Um, yeah. And just on their defence, Shanks, like Toby Booth, I've heard, heard him in an interview saying, uh, the new defence coach, he's only been in a week or two. Like they're conceding an average of over 30 points a game, like and, since he's been involved. And like this guy's supposed to make them better defensively. And another that's, what, that's what USP average. was. What's that? <laughs> that's, that? That's what their USP used to be of just a massive defence and they'd grind out yeah. wins and, and sort of strangle you and. and you know, they dominate up front, but... Well, yeah, Shanks, you, you go there, they're literally trying to get out of tackles. Yeah. And that, that, that's what it looks like. You've got senior players. If you've got a new defence coach, you'd think that would instill a bit of... You know, a new coach comes in and, and he gets, you know, gets testosterone, gets everyone going forward, gets a bit, a bit more voice. excited. Yeah. A new voice, but... Yeah, like, exactly. I remember playing against Ospreys in the past and they, you know, when they were the, one of the first teams to blitz and that was kind of their DNA was just... You know, a rock star team, but the defense was mm. was class. And I, I, yeah, I kind of feel for the Welsh regions. Though I feel like the a lot of them, probably other than I think Scarlet's got their own history and, and tradition and, and DNA in Cardiff as well. I think the other two are really struggling for a sense of who, who they are and the way they're trying to play the game at the moment. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, all of Welsh regions have have struggled over in South Africa. It's, you know, Ospreys are no different to Cardiff Dragons or the Scarlets getting pumped up there. So. You know, yeah, it, it can't be too harsh on them. Um, it's proven really tough place to go, actually. Any of the Welsh regions making the top eight this season? Um, probably not. No, I think that the shield will be competitive, and that's opened up a little bit. You know, Osprey's leading that, but Scarlets and Cardiff can still qualify. I don't think, Steve, I don't think they'll make the top eight. Um, and but there's still a bit of time left to gain momentum, but. Maybe, but I, I can't really see it. Um, one more game to cover. Munster, Benetton. 51-22. Um, Watch this, Stevie. Yeah, I did. Um, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing course, else to do. I know, I know. Uh, man, when you have a sore back and you can't play golf, like you just watch rugby. So, uh, yeah, Munster were, Munster were half decent. I don't know, John, you have talked about some of the criticism that I've given Munster this season about not putting teams away and you know, this brand and style of rugby that their plan has been pretty lethargic. You know, they haven't taken teams apart. There's Simon Zebo, 120 kegs, getting over for another try. <laughs> uh, Gavin Coombs was really good in the second row, very impressive. I think he was man of the match. You know, Craig Casey, who, uh, I don't know, I think Nathan Doak for me still a little bit of a better player, but well, you know, it's going to be a big summer ahead for him to see if he gets selected on the tour to go from New Zealand. But yeah, really mm -hmm. dominant. Wants to run away with it in the last 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Bennett scored a couple of nice tries themselves, but yeah, this monster, monster team seemed to be ticking along nicely. Joey Carberry to come back in. A couple of big hitters in the pack as well. So a big weekend this weekend, and then let's see how they go in Europe for the two weeks. But yeah, monster seemed to be Seem to be just picking at the right time, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I'd, be very, I'd be very happy if I was a monster player right now and a coach. Just ticking away nicely. Probably not getting that many plaudits. Stevie's hammering them every week. <laughs> <laughs> they're, sitting, they're sitting pretty nice. You know, nine wins from 14. You've got a table in front of us, nine wins from 14. They're, they're going right into Europe. They'll, 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 uh, I think that their brand rugby and the way they're trying to play it seems to have found their their niche or however they, you want to call it. They seem to be, they've found their rhythm a bit better. Still, uh, they, I still don't think they've, they've quite clicked yet, but I think they're finding a nice continuity to the way they're trying to play the game. And yeah, I mean, you look at the table, three Irish teams sit, sat pretty right at the top. Um, then the two Scottish teams and then no Welsh team shanks. There's still no head coach announced. Is that right? Phil Graham Roundtree, still like, he's the forwards coach. Has there been a head coach announced just yet? No. No, no, I've seen. Sure. no, I don't think so. Damien Delende, he's away, obviously. Fekatoe, he's coming in next season. 
Clute's so, gone to Bath, isn't he? I saw yeah, that. Yeah, Bath, so, yeah, a bit of movement around Munster, but I think sometimes that can be a good thing, you know, coming towards the end of the season. Certainly up your game a little bit, wouldn't you? Not knowing who's coming in or, or you know, so you yeah. have to impress because all coaches are their favourites, as John is a clear example of that. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Ryan didn't pick him. But he wasn't the only one, to be honest. You don't, you don't. There's a few coaches you don't like. Connell, nope. you got rid of him. Well done. <laughs> Get rid of him. Anyway, I wasn't even there. I wasn't part Start of that a group. Petition. Took a <laughs> parliament. Started a petition. Started a coup. <laughs> Started a coup from my house. <laughs> All right. What you see? Yeah. Um, we'll move on to rants of the week. Do you boys have anything you want to get off your chest? Apart from your bad backs. I imagine you like the bone collector in that film. Then there's a Washington on a bed. Just like <laughs> watching all the rugby. Oh, like, I've, I've spent, I've, the amount of money I've spent on chiropractors, physios. I'm getting an MRI scan on Tuesday. I'm just bit the bullet. I'm getting that on Oh, Tuesday. it's a bad one, is it? It's a proper one. You've done a proper job. Pelvic twist thing and all like so. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nightmare. And if I want to play a bit of golf in the summer, that's not my rant, however. My rant is a South African TMO in the Stormers game versus Ulster. He needs to be held accountable. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Get, put him in jail. Yeah. Get rid of him. Um, John? You, you um, yeah, rants. Uh, you know, you three. Hmm? The, the, the food in America, the food in New York, not great. Food was good great. actually in New York. No, no rants. That was a good trip, great trip actually. You were there, Shanks, actually. So yeah, we, we we've not recovered that. We'll get into that. We didn't invite Stevie. I feel a bit bad about that, but I was there. Me, last. And, me and you, me and you, kicking up in New York on Premier. That was lovely. Yeah, just expense it all, Stevie. <laughs> just put it through, mate. I, have actually, got, I, have, I actually have got a rant. Um, all right. Just the, the crowds, I know they're only allowed 50% occupancy, I think, but I think they were about 0.05% occupancy in the, in the stadiums. Don't, I don't, I don't, in South memory, Africa? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not missing but, something there. With, with the, I'm, I'm sure they're no, allowed I don't think to so. I, think, I thought it was like 50%, maybe. Yeah, that's what oh, I thought. Yeah. And I just, I just again, I think, you think the, I, I get the Sharks Enemy game, no one wants to probably go and watch that. But I think my memories of watch. I you know, grew up watching Super Rugby and, and you watch the Curry Cup and, Unbelievable crowds. And I reckon yeah. you, I reckon they're getting more people. I saw the Scarlets training at a school. I reckon there's more people watching the Scarlets training at school than are coming to some of the games. I'm just trying <laughs> I'm trying to get my head around it because they love the ruckers over there and I don't understand yeah. why. And and the games that like the Stormers, they're playing a great they're playing great rugby. You're out in the sun. They have won where, two World Cups, mind, haven't they? Well, three. Yeah, yeah but we're, we exactly so I, I get there's maybe socio political issues. A hand, but it'd be great to see, maybe not a rant, just a, a plea to see bigger crowds yeah. in South Africa because the stadiums are massive, aren't they? They're huge yeah, it's with massive. loads of history, a lot of history behind them as well. The class, yeah. Any right. Right. Shanks? Um, jet lag, just tired, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, Got I've slept it. properly since, yeah. Um, weather, I can hear it raining outside now. I thought we were over it. I want to play summer rugby. We need summer rugby. For rugby to move forward, I think it has to be played in the summer. When the conditions are better, when skill levels are better, I think we'll, well, in Wales, we'll be able to compete a lot more. We're, we're, I, I hate the rain. I hate the cold. <laughs> and rugby, as a product, is so much better. So much better. Well, you can, yeah, compare the Edinburgh game and then compare the Stormers game, you're like, well, to one, exactly. one different so there you go I'm with you Shank alright um, producer Colm had my ear that only 2,000 were allowed into South Africa uh, 50% right. in Cape Town so yeah apparently so um, okay. anyway right let's see if you can get this right presenter's choice right celeb you'd love to slap um, aggressive favourite Will Smith movie biggest trash talk you played with um Let's go favourite Will Smith movie. Oh. Oh, uh, this is a, uh, this is a lot of good ones. Mm. I Am Legend. I Am Legend is good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Only one, only one. That's like an amazing film because it's 
only him in it, really, isn't it? Mm. Like the most, the majority of the film is just him yeah. playing one character, no one else. Apart Big few people are like you. <laughs> <laughs> A big fan of uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, that's good. That's seven pounds is good as well. Seven pounds, there we go. Good, yeah. yeah. Stevie? Black. <laughs> um, yeah, seven pounds is probably my favourite or King Richard. I've not seen that. I really want to see it. I've never seen, it. Yeah, seen either of you. <laughs> I just heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> What, 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 was was for Wild West? what was that one again? Um, Bad Boys for Aladdin. Life. Oh, Aladdin. <laughs> anyway, the state. I just, I just Google films. Well, yeah, Wild Wild, uh, Wild, Wild West. It was. Wild, Wild West. West. There you go. Um, what do you reckon? Uh, what do you boys reckon about the slap? Fake. Um, fake. fake yeah, I agree. Stevie. No, I think it's real. Just the, the whole apology and stuff that's come out of it. I, I think it's real. I saw, tickets, I, I saw a conspiracy. I saw conspiracy on it today that he's that that Chris Rock's wearing a, a cheek pad. So there you go. He, he was prepared. Cheek pad. Who gets hit like that? Who gets hit like that and just yeah? Just, ah, brilliant. Yeah, exactly. It was what an absolute shit army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, carry on. It looked exactly like something from a movie, didn't it? Even a slap. Rubbish. Yeah. But I'm I'm very cynical, like yourself, John. So yeah. in life and in and in movie. Um okay, so fixtures this weekend, standout fixtures, uh Vodacom Bulls versus Ulster. Reckon Ulster can redeem themselves. Yeah, I think so. Tough. Like uh, uh, I think so. yeah, I think so. Like they're gonna play a Pretty strong team. Hendy Ian Henderson should be back again. Um, Nick Timoney back at number eight. Probably James Hume back in the centre. I think all the teams that have big games coming up in Europe, lads, will probably play and uh, field a pretty strong side. Kind of then to kick on in, in, into the next week. So, yeah, I'm expecting all should be fully loaded, but I'm also expecting the Bulls to be fully loaded. You know, early lows in class for them boys. Um, obviously, could see a pen six. Ulster number eight. Um, I think this is going to be a real tough challenge for Ulster, but I, I, I do fancy them. Like I just think they're, they're they know how to change the tactics during the game, negate the opposition, and yeah, um, they're a good run of form themselves. So why not? Edinburgh clean sweep, two from two. Do you reckon, JB? Good. This is why I asked. They're going up. They're going up to altitude now, aren't they? Yeah. So hanging. I mean. Mm -hmm. I think if I was them, and they won't say this outwardly, I think if I came back from that trip with a win, you, you'd probably take it, given given that no one's really gone over there. Uh, and I know coaches probably look at look at periods and think, oh, we need to get X, you know, this number of points from or X number of wins from this this block. And I certainly think if I was Mike Blair, they they can win the game definitely. But I just think it looks like the team struggles so badly at altitude, especially having come from senior level. We did loads of stuff like with Wales, like where we'd train on bikes with like altitude masks on. Any difference, does it? Absolutely none. <laughs> That's like, what I mean. Was, it was like we we did loads of judo as well. When you, you know you could you could <laughs> roll people over. I thought that's how we're going to beat New Zealand. We did loads of judo, here, so we were really good in the contact area. Tried it once, slipped off, penalty. Yeah. Like, oh. We were Scarlet's, um, Scarlet's went and they decided with when when they in the first year they went and they just decided they all the teams were trying to figure out you know do you go high do you go high early or do you you know do you go up late and they just said like it doesn't make any difference we're going to go up we're going to be absolutely hanging as long yeah. as you win the game at, at, at sea level happy days just lungs like Chris packets <laughs> um, Scarlet's Cardiff big game that is uh, for the Welsh. Um, a couple of things really big. Uh, I really, as I said, I hope Willis Alaholo plays because I think that centre duel will be really good. And also Reese Patchell, Jared Evans, um, both real attack intense. Probably not going to start for Wales because you've got Dan Bigger, but they could certainly. I mean, there might be not loads on for the Welsh regions in terms of getting to the top eight. Um, that might be a little bit of a step too far, but there's certainly a lot of. 
rugby to be played for spots in that Welsh team because internationally that there's only probably three or four places that you know you you could pick now to say yeah you're in that Welsh team the rest I think is pretty open so I think there's still quite a lot to play for it's a derby um, I think the weather should be good so that would be good and then we got Munster Leinster Irish one just on, that scarlet, just on the Scarlet scheme, yeah, do, you reckon they'll get a decent, do you reckon they'll get a decent crowd? Yeah. yeah. I know I mean, like, the, I, the Welsh, I, Welsh rugby's taking a hammer in at the minute. Yeah, it has. But, but the, I think, and this is a bit of a serious, cheesy point, but like, surely the people like the people who support the game should get down to watch. And that always surprises me sometimes, that the, the lack of crowd sometimes at, at Welsh derbies at times. Yeah, it is. And, and part of it is because we've not we've not seen great games either. You know, they've not been classic epic games, you know, where there's a lot of emotion involved and scores can go either way. They've, they've actually been quite boring. But mm -hmm. I think with Scarlet's off the back of beating Zebre pretty well, pretty convincingly, uh, Ryan Combier was, looked decent. They look sharp. They look slick. You know, Scott Williams, again, is passing game. Johnny McNichol hits um, a lovely line for his try and features heavily in a lot of the good stuff. He's re-signed, which is great news for the Scarlet's. So you've got two teams that want to play rugby, you know, want to play in those wide channels and weather permitting, hopefully, it'd be um, El Clasico. I hope so, anyway. Bigged it up enough now. Um, what about a little word, John, on Rob Harley? 12 years at Glasgow. Rob Harley. Give us your best story on him. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you a story off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's one of them, is he? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a really uh, eccentric character, very quiet, very intense. First time I met him, he was a uh, first, actually, first training session. Yeah, he came in, he was 18, and I'm not trying to be like Billy Big. And if you're a young lad, you just kind of you didn't really get in amongst it. And he was like pulling people back, and he was not, like, like he did the whole this playing group, nausing it right up. People were flipping it on his back, people were scratching. He was like 80, just this kid that'd been asked to come and train. And I got on the bike with the mass training to like get a spin cooler. And I said, Oh, Rob, that was, that was a pretty, the first thing he ever said to me, I said, Oh, Rob, that was a pretty, pretty tough day. He said, It's been darker days at sea, John. And then walked <laughs> off. <laughs> so, was it that's amazing? Awesome. He is super, super intelligent guy. Like, would read like Russian novels. Uh, oh, just one of these guys. Intelligence. Just, yeah, too, too smart. Like, and was just like the most honest. Player, not not a really glamorous player. I can't I'm not gonna say say he was, but we did like a training session where it was like circuits. He got told to take the whole summer off because he played a lot of rugby that year as his first season. He came back and he had taken the whole summer off, and we did circuits. And I think it was about twenty minute circuits to get through it. It took him forty five minutes we had to stand and watch him do, it. and he wouldn't cut a rep. You know, you would just start cutting corners or yeah, didn't cut didn't cut one single rep. He's chundering everywhere. Um, good team guy. Boys love him there. Yeah, he's been one of them, isn't he? You know, always featured, always given everything. Always, maybe uh, maybe yeah. not got the headlines of a lot of others, like the Barclays. Just a grafter. Probably, probably better yeah. when it was when there was less cameras around. Just a nuisance. Derby's just a pain in the arse. Always holding on to players when you could hold on to players and the dark arts. He was he he thrived on that stuff. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know where I'll go next. It's a shame to see him leave actually because he's you, you kind of hope players are you know one club men, but that's the reality of yeah, sport, isn't it? Um, well, I think, lads, that will do us before Stevie falls asleep. Um, On the diazepams. Well, there's sure. breaking, news, breaking news in Ulster, lads. What is it? Johnny Bell has been announced as the new defence coach for Ulster. When? So, just now? Wow. Well, today, yeah. It was announced today. Where's he come from, Stevie? He was at Glasgow. John, was he... He was doing a little bit of attack at Glasgow and then he moved back to Worcester. Uh, or sorry, he was at Gloucester, went to Glasgow, and then he went to Worcester. And I think uh, yeah, he was always trying to make a, an effort to get back towards home. Um, and just with Gar Payne leaving, that opportunity came up. So, yeah, I heard there was a couple of big names in for the job, like a couple of, and a couple of big names that didn't even get interviews. So, uh, fair play to him. That's really good knowledge, Steve. I was trying to trip you up, thinking you wouldn't have a clue, but you know, you know exactly where his favourite colour is. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think that will do us. Um, we're on next week. Don't forget, every URC game is live on Premier Sports. Only place to watch every minute. Subscribe, watch, enjoy. Lads, see you next week. See you, see you next, next week. week boys.